They should have had it the other way. I'm the one who gets the beautiful view here. All you get to look at is me. I'd like to reflect for a few moments on two things. First of all, our experience at Caesarea Philippi. And also the notion of what it means to have to go on pilgrimage. First of all, Caesarea Philippi. I'm not going to talk about the rock. I'm not going to talk about Hades. I'm going to talk about the two questions that Jesus posed at that time. The first question, who do people say that I am? Now, with all due respect, it's a rather inconsequential question because it was addressed to no one. It was addressed to everyone. And the responses given were attributed to no one. Who do people say that I am? Well, they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Jeremiah, Elijah, some say Jeremiah or a prophet. It's interesting, there are a few comments that are left out. First of all, they never said that anyone said you were the Messiah. And they also left out all the negative news. They didn't tell him, Jesus, people think you're a blasphemer. Blasphemer. Jesus, think people think you're out of your head or that you're evil. They left all that up. Just giving the standard fare. And then Jesus posed the question to an individual, to Peter. And he said, who do you say that I am? This is a most important question in the life of the priest. Because we see when Peter said, you are the Messiah, when he realized that Jesus was all that Israel had hoped for, for centuries, and was his savior, everything in Peter's life changed. Peter immediately became who he was supposed to be to the point that he was given a new name. And he was told what he was supposed to do. Now, as priests, of course we want to say, yep, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the most important person in my life. But that's not always the case. Jesus, I love you, but you're not all that important. I have other concerns. Or Jesus, by my behavior and my attitudes, you're not all that important. But it's always, we always have the opportunity to renew ourselves, to renew our attitudes and our behavior so that we can respond like Peter and say, who Jesus really is to us. One thought. The second thought. Pilgrimages. Now, I don't know whether we've talked you've talked about it or not, but we've heard you've heard about how there was a great dispute in Judaism whether God could be worshipped anywhere except the temple whether they could go to the north or where the Samaritans worship God. It's a great problem. Do you remember what Jesus said when the dispute was referenced in his conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well? You won't worship God in places. You'll worship God in spirit. Places are no longer important to us because we worship Jesus. We adore and love him. Now, my comment is this. So why did we get into a plane and travel 6,000 miles to pray when we could have prayed just as easily in Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, maybe even Easton? Okay? <laughs> why? Do we say that our prayers are more efficacious here? that God answers them 
more readily if we pray here? No. That would be almost superstitious, almost magic, trying to manipulate God. That if we do this, it, it works. No. God doesn't change when we go on a pilgrimage. But when we go on a pilgrimage, we change. We change. And I hope and sincerely pray that each of you takes this opportunity, these 10 days or so, to allow yourself to be amazed as you were as a child at Christmas and to be transformed into the kind of person God wants you to be. God bless you.